Hello YouTube, welcome to this new installment of the Hypertrophy series. We are going to introduce a very important theme in this episode, and that's going to be the baseline. This is a term that I use and I've heard other people use. I don't know if it's the exact, it fits the exact description of what modern programming is going to be referring when it comes to that certain notion, but basically what I mean when I talk about the baseline is the baseline is your ability to produce intensity and go through the motion and exert yourself. For example, if I make you do a set of 10 squats, how much time is it going to take for you to go back to baseline? Meaning, how much time is it going to take for you to regain the ability to do 10 reps of squat with the same weight? The reason why this notion is so important is because it ties into the theme of muscular failure and going to failure. And all of that is going to play a role in the frequency of your workouts and your ability to recover. So it's all ingredients that are going to be making your, the pie that is going to be your physique. You need to know every single variable because you want to be in control of them. If you're not in control of them, they control you. So the baseline, it exists in two dimensions, in my opinion. One, the baseline within the workout and the baseline between workouts. And this dichotomy between the, uh, the, the, the universe of the workout as the sessions e exist and the relationships they have between each other because they follow each other during the week or even during the day are both very important and I'm always going to be referring to those two dimensions. As far as the baseline goes when it comes to the second dimension, meaning between sessions, it's simple, it's called recovery. It's a topic that is very important because that's what's going to determine your program, especially if you're a bodybuilder, because you want to be able to attack the muscle as much as possible, as often as possible, to basically create as much muscular damage as you can, recover enough so that you can repeat that cycle and progress. Why? Because the more you progress, the more you can damage the muscle because the bigger the muscle becomes. It's something that most people don't realize. Of course, tonnage is going to have to increase, but that is a direct correlation with the fact that your muscle has now more volume, meaning that you can break more fibers, and the more fibers you break, the more the muscle creates, the more you can break. So it's a virtuous circle. But enough of that. That baseline between the sessions is going to be something that you're going to have to concern yourself in terms of recovery. It's going to be something that's going to dictate your frequency. It's going to be something that dictates whether you want to do heavy or light days. If you do a heavy squat day on Monday, maybe you could go back on Wednesday and also do some quad accessories, but you're not going to push them all the way. Why? You might still be weak from that first workout, meaning that your ability to go back to baseline for strength work is not there yet. But maybe you met, you met the baseline for quad recovery, meaning your quads are almost fully recovered, so you could go back and still work them. That is going to be what I would call the macro environment of the workout. And it's not, in my opinion, the most interesting portion of it. What we're going to concern ourselves today is going to be the micro portion of this notion. We are going to be talking about the relationship between sessions when we discuss recovery and frequency in this series. But for now, let's focus on that because I think it's the most important variable to control to be able to push tonnage and progression. Why? Because it's going to dictate what hard sets and what beneficial sets for muscular fatigue and, uh, and the overall hypertrophy is going to be. I'm going to try and get that light on, only moving my arm. I left. Oh, still, no. Three times, four times. Okay, I think it's not working anymore. Never mind. All right. So, as far as baseline within the workout, what do you have to pay attention to? The more taxing 
the lift or the set you're doing is, the longer it's going to take you to go back to baseline. Certain sets might take you days to go back to baseline. For example, if you go and you do a one rep max of the deadlift, your ability to go back to baseline on that lift is not going to be there for the rest of the session. Because if it was a true 100% lift, you're not going to be able to redo that lift during the session no matter, no matter how long you rest. Once you understand that notion, you can apply it to everything else. Why? This also means that because this one rep max was so taxing on the muscular system that you can't do it again, there also exists on the end, on other end of the spectrum lifts that are so easy that they're not even going to really register in terms of muscular fatigue, meaning you're going to be able to repeat them forever. This is why push-ups for someone who's relatively advanced are not super interesting when it comes to building big muscles. Why? You will be able to go back to baseline like this. If I make you, if you're an advanced bencher and you're not super heavy or super fat, and I make you do a set of 40 push-ups, you'll be able to repeat that feat how many times as you want. You're going to be able to do 39, 38, 37, and at the end of the day, you're going to accumulate a lot of tonnage, but because that lift in itself doesn't have the ability to bring you to muscular failure in lower rep ranges, therefore, its ability to... It's, it fails to, uh, to challenge your ability to go back to baseline. And that's what we don't want. We want lifts that are going to make it so that we cannot go back to baseline because it means that we're digging into the muscular fibers to the point where they need a break and because they need a break, they're going to recover and become bigger. So this is when rep ranges and sets come into play. And this is where all of those talks about volume and intensity and quality tonnage also come into play. Sets that are going to dig into your muscular endurance and that are going to challenge your ability to go back to baseline are quality sets, what people would call hard sets that are going to be defined in another episode. This is why you need to focus on. This is also why evolving rep ranges are going to be much more suitable to meet that goal. It's because if you do a five by five and you manage to get five on the first set and five on the last set, the first set didn't challenge your ability to go back to baseline because you were able to get five sets afterwards. So you didn't dig as much as you could have. And on the flip side, this is also going to allow you to use certain means to hypertrophy your muscle that are not going to really challenge the ability to go back to baseline, but still be quality. For example, nucleus overload. Any movement you do for nucleus overload should never, ever, uh, induced a muscular fatigue at the point where you're not able to repeat the feat because the very existence and the very concept of the notion of nucleus overload is the repeatability of the movement to accumulate volume. That being said, because it's its own thing and its own method of training, we do not want the rest of our training to be applied like this. The rest of the training should be conduced in a way where if, I, if you finish the set and you retake the set after three minutes of rest, you won't be able to get as many reps. That way, you start your training with your working sets that are going to dig into your muscular endurance and your strength work, because working sets will exist within the workout, and then you pyramid down with your variations, your accessories, to the point where at the end of the workout, your ability to go back to baseline should be shot. For example, for my bench press sessions, if I start doing push-ups at the very start of the session, I can get 50 easy and repeat that forever. If I do the push-ups at the end of the workout, I'm going to maybe get 30. But after the 30, I won't be able to get 30. I'll get maybe 25 and then 20. Meaning what? I challenged my muscles so much and they're so tired that they can't recover within the workout. And that's what we want. Because every single lift we do should be hard enough that the muscles need more adaptative time than just the three or four minutes of rest between the sets. They need 
days. And that's when we know the muscle is damaged enough that it's going to grow. And down the line, the, the boost of tonnage that this represents is going to be valuable because we know that it induces hypertrophy. This is why, to go back to my previous videos, not every boost of tonnage and not every tonnage is born equal. There is such a thing as junk volume. Now, that being said, is that volume that you have you accumulated that didn't challenge you and didn't uh, break your ability to go back to baseline completely worthless? No, but it's not as good because it doesn't uh, promote progression. And at the end of the day, unless you're doing that within a nucleus overload scheme, you don't accumulate as much as you think you do. You're, not, you're just not challenging yourself enough. So that's it for this video. The concept of baseline I will use a ton because as I say, it applies to frequency, recovery, and muscular hypertrophy, which is what I care about the most. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.